What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. I, it's not really tuning in. Like, thanks for clicking on the video, assholes. Yeah, that. I'm Chubbs. I'm one take. Uh, this is our raw, authentic, um, our non-applicable recap of Raw from July 24th, 2017, in Washington, D.C. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram, na podcast nine one nine, Twitter, na underscore podcast nine one nine, and SoundCloud occasionally, na podcast nine one nine. I was trying to do it once a week, but I feel like having the episodes up for just a week is kind right. of pointless. Yeah, especially when nobody's watching. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, quick recap of the matches. Things happened. They finished. Done. Right. This was the first match? Finn? Yes. I wow. was surprised as well. Yeah. Finn versus Elias and an ODQ. Um, Elias wins. We'll talk about how... Uh, Enzo versus Cass, where Cass gets the win, obviously. They can stop doing that now. Um, Emma got squashed by Nia Jax. Uh, Thought to have been a punishment. Yeah, for her. For her. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, Bailey defeats Sasha for the number one contenders. Surprised. I, we'll talk about that, because I I'm just... That was um, a good match, though. Yeah. Jason Jordan... Finally makes his Raw debut, uh, and I say that with that weird tone, and I'll explain why. Are they he, making him awkward on purpose? He did. Yeah. Oh, uh, he defeated Kurt Hawkins. That was a shocker. Uh, <laughs> I'm one of the few people that likes Kurt. I, I, he's he serves his purpose. I mean, good I, on him for accepting. I his like role. him more because he knows that, and yeah. I also I actually find his gimmick funny. Uh, Man, who knows? Did you lose lose your place? Yeah. No, Revival versus the Good Brothers. Oh, yeah, my bad. Oh, Revival won. Yes. I remember, Yeah, because the Hardys came out and distracted because the Good Brothers <laughs> just, probably would have had the win. I just didn't take notes. I'm going off of one takes notes. Yeah, and I wrote notes based on them being for me. <laughs> and, um, and then Dean and Seth... In a somewhat mini shield reunion, which we'll probably talk about on the rumors episode, defeated Miz and the Tourage. And the Tourage. To end the show. Now, if you've been following along with us, you know that I've had a certain level of disdain for the WWE product over. Do they, though? Because I sometimes I wonder how much stuff we talk about while we're recording and the other stuff True. we just talk about. And I know last week for sure. Because Ooh. I had numerous complaints. <laughs> uh, so if you listened to last week epi- last week's episode, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so all f- five people? Right. Well, all we're right. two, we're of, two them. of them. Yeah. <laughs> so we kicked the show off with Roman, Joe. Um, actually, let me start that over. We had, I, I don't care about the recaps that they do i don't want to recap their recap no i just you know put I, mean? I put it in, in i put it in order of what happens throughout the entire yeah. show just if we have to go back and look at stuff or it also um sometimes throughout like a month i'll go all right i wonder how many times they did yeah. other recaps that's why i'm always complaining about them doing recaps right. it's because I, I write it down right no i just meant as far as i started reading it and then i realized that it was a recap and i'm like well i don't need to recap the recap <laughs> so uh kurt uh, to the ring uh, announces that Jordan's first. Did he announce it? Well, so he came to the yeah. ring and he and he talked about you know being excited and catching up with his son, and then he said how Jason Jordan was going to have his raw debut. Gotcha. Um, um, t- to go back and not digress, I don't know how Kurt does it, but every time he comes out to the ring, he finds the way to look more excited about the you suck chance. I don't know how he does it. Like, how can you? up you're happy about that like this week he was almost like jumping up and down and like orchestrating the crowd and I was right. just like well I mean for his character he's got to be extra happy now that he's discovered that he has an illegitimate son no which totally real. makes sense it's just like every I think I've said that every week since he's been back he's, he was more excited than last week he was more excited how do you keep doing that <laughs> it's the drugs uh just kidding he's not on drugs anymore um but yeah, that he said Jason Jordan was gonna um, have his Raw debut, and then he started talking about he made his decision on who was gonna face Brock Lesnar. Right, and then cut uh, to Braun came out. Joe came out first. 
Braun came out first. Braun did? Bet. Because oh, he yeah. came out and he said, the next words out of your mouth better, better be, be Braun, Braun Strowman. Strowman. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, um, that. And then... And then... Joe came out. And then Roman came out. And then... And apparently I'm one of the few people that was... Gl- I don't want to say glad. I... Roman did more than more with less like he should be doing as far as talking. Thought he did a good job of being direct to the point, saying what needed to be said, and not digressing. Like he said, neither of you guys have done crap since you've been here. I've done this, I've done this, I've done that. Shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it still felt wonky a little bit to me. Like it was, here, Roman, this is your script. And he was like, okay, I dig it, uh, sort of. Can I change something? And they're like, no. I get what you're saying, but I, I feel like it's sort of like how I'm always, I don't want to say the word complaining because it doesn't take me out of anything, but I guess I could say one of my complaints is like Cass. I don't like his cadence, and it's the same with Baron Corbin, who Baron Corbin's is even worse because he talks like this and breaks stuff. I don't like it. Opposed to Roman, I feel like it actually is part of how he like talks, so it seems, I don't know how to word what I, what I mean doesn't bother me as much and i don't think i notice it because i feel like he's he's talking it like his character would talk it opposed to the other guys that it's just like they're trying to remember what they're saying okay you get what i mean yeah i mean i i don't i don't feel that way with Cass or, Bar- or baron um when Cass does his heated promos i'm good other than that he gets two jersey drawl on it and and slows down and Baron's worse. Okay. And uh, I probably wouldn't have been as bothered by Baron, but anytime he's on commentary, he has a normal conversation with whoever's talking to him, and he, it's great. But then when he's doing his promos, he talk. I'm gonna. Like, is it really that deliberate? It's pretty robotic. I I haven't noticed. I'll have to pay extra attention because I I. And he's I gotten better noticed. too. <laughs> um. And I'm not saying Romans was was that style on Monday. It just it just felt more scripted than the other stuff. Well, may, maybe for me, I like it because I liked what he was saying, and I felt like he was saying it with the attitude that I want him to say it with. Because I, he can still be a face and have an attitude, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I mean, you're big, strong men fighting each other, and there's a thing called adrenaline and aggression, and. And and bravado and yeah. and testosterone and yeah like yeah I don't expect people in a competitive sport or situation to just be like oh I'm a face so I gotta be all calm and cool. Right. Uh, he took a shot at the battleground crowd. I laughed for having been quiet during uh, the main event and battleground in general. Um, I I feel like. Like, we, we, I don't know how to explain this. I feel like it missed just a little bit. It missed a little bit because they were in D.C. And the pay-per-view took place in Philadelphia. Yeah. And the way, I will agree with this was poorly done, is he addressed it to the crowd like they were in Philadelphia. Yeah. And he was expecting a pop from the crowd because, it, oh, they, he said Philadelphia. Right. But it was in D.C. where it, it should have been worded differently, where it's like, hey, they, they were in Philadelphia, pay-per-view couldn't get a pop, I can. You know, anything to get a different reaction, yeah. even if they would have gotten a boo out of the, the crowd, which he kind of did, but it was only like five people. Right. They were just like, oh, it's Roman talking, boo. Yeah. Uh. And the, the rest were like, oh, he didn't say our city, and that's not our rival. <laughs> They're our rival. Uh, so, either way, it's been announced that there's going to be a fatal four-way for the Universal title who saw that coming? Yeah, we didn't predict that a month plus ago. Right. Uh, okay, fight ensued. I, I, to, I totally missed what Braun said. Luckily, I'd seen other clips of it where he said, oh, I don't care Piling if it's one bodies. on one, two on one. I just want to pile up bodies. Yeah. And the roll went, shut up, and then hit him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a question. Braun got over everybody on that one. Yeah, duh. How, like... I don't want to use the word annoyed because that's too strong of a word. I was a bit perturbed that this close to what they did with Joe and Braun, I mean Brock, of clearing the, the locker room out to help 
them doing it again. Yeah. Even though it served its purpose, and I laughed pretty go- pretty good. Pretty guard. Pretty good and hard. Guard. Yeah. Pretty good when one of the performance center security guard guys got a fatot right in the face from Braun. Mm-hmm. And then the one guy Braun was going to throw over the top rope, apparently that guy wasn't as athletic as the guy thought he was. So he kind of caught the top rope, and he went, like, flailing right. and flinging out of the ring. And then the next guy He got launched. Chuck it, chuck it, <laughs> football. Yeah, that guy, give that guy a raise. Yeah, because that bump he took from, yeah. that, that's, that's an alley. That was, that was almost to the ramp. Yeah, and it's not like, I mean, those are pads out there, but yeah. it's not like. No, those are, they're hard pads. Well, it's better than the ones they use at house shows. The ones they use at house shows are like the ones we used to have in like elementary and high school, the, the gym pads. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that was... But still, it's on concrete. You gotta pay me pretty good to take that bump. No, they can't pay me to take that bump this juncture in my life. I mean, when I was younger, maybe. I would take it, and then I'd need to be able to retire, because I'd be broken. I'd be in a wheelchair. I'd be broken, Chubbs. My back can't take that. <laughs> uh, so, Elias singing his song... Excuse me, I burped. You probably heard it. Whatever. <laughs> uh, Finn, yeah. Finn comes out and, and it, it, I'm not like this. This feud I've been I've been fine with because they needed to find a way to get Elias some some TV time and whatnot, yeah. and I'm okay with because he's serviceable in the ring. His his gimmick is remotely funny to me, even though they don't have him drifting enough. Yeah. I'd still like to see him in the background during a segment, just walk through strumming his guitar. Of course, and they could do that now. to set up other feuds later down the road. You never know. Right. But how many times can they have him play a song and have whoever he's having a match with interrupt that song? Every time. That would be the correct answer. And if you do it three weeks in a row, I'm done with it after week two. Yeah, it'd be one thing if he was the face and the crowd was super into the songs. Yeah. But he's the heel. Yeah. The crowd doesn't care for the songs. Nobody wants to walk with Elias. Wh- wh- wouldn't you... Th- <laughs> Sorry, it's, just, it's funny to me. <laughs> wouldn't you think it would get more heel heat if it went too long? Yeah. Opposed to cutting it short and getting... Oh, we get a quick pop from Yay, Finn's here. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree with you. And I'd, I'd, I'd much rather, instead of them having Finn's music hit or whoever he's going to wrestle against, just come out and go, just, with well, a mic, just, just here, shut up already. And then their music hits or something. I don't know. I really, like, are they missing a boat by ha- not having Elias be able to feud with Aiden English? <laughs> uh, no, just me. They could have a, they could have a, a, a sing-off. Which I, I know has been done, uh, Cass and, and Aiden did in NXT. Yeah. Um, but I, th- I just think that would be funny. Uh, so Elias gets the win because Bray appears and hits Finn with the sister Abigail. I like how they did it. I like how they did it as far as I was expecting him to be in the ring and then grab Finn. Not the lights came on and he already had Finn in, like, already full motion to get ready to the sister Abigail. Yeah. So I like that. Yeah, like it, the lights came on, and I was just like, "Oh, it's already happening." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Opposed, all right. Now he's gonna grab him and do it. Yeah. Um. Because yeah, I feel like if he, yeah, because then I feel like you have less of a chance to reverse it. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. come in, the lights are on, and he's already like, "Here we go." Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I I like that as well. He's like, Whoa, um, what you doing, brother? So I, here's. <laughs> This is where I had my first issue with the episode. Uh, going to commercial after the Finn and Elias match, they said, coming up next, huh. Jason Jordan's Raw in-ring debut. Keep in mind that that was coming up next. And they'd already said twice in the show, if I remember correctly, like Kurt said it was going to be his debut during his in-ring part, and then there was another thing before that I thought where they, they said... Jason Jordan was going to have his... Or maybe that's what the one you were talking about. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's okay. Either um, way, you're... No, that was the only... Like, uh, Kurt mentioned it, and then the only real... Like, they put up the the graphic for yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. 
and said it was up next. This okay. was at 45 yeah. minutes into the show. Right. His match didn't come until two hours and 14 minutes into the show. How is that up next? Well, technically it was preceding what, what it said, so it was, it was next. So, I mean, there was, there was one, two, three matches and at least half a dozen or more little segments and little stuff. segments and interviews between up next and it actually happening. Yep. And it's not the first time they've done it, but this is like the most extreme. Yeah. That you, I can usually remember. it's like up next and you come back and it's one little segment yeah. and then it goes to like the, they had the, a uh, few weeks ago, like a month ago, it was gold dust and our truth. Yeah. And it was for their first match. It was like up next. And then it was a gold dust promo. And then there was another match. And then it yeah. happened. But this is this one you had an hour, like an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> like, how, how does that how does that happen? Was he late getting there? <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe he was. He wasn't there, and they were just like, "All right, we'll just roll with everything else." Um, that's a possibility. But either way, because I mean, then there was even they did the recap of the Kurt and Jordan interview. Uh, then they did a Kurt interview. And I'm like, okay, they're really pushing for this match to be next. Right. And then it, it was Enzo. Yeah. I, then it was another commercial. Nothing happened between the commercial after the announcement and then the next commercial. Right. It was an interview, a recap, uh, an interruption, a quick backstage segment, and then a commercial. See, those are the things where if I, if I paid tickets and was there... Those are the things that would annoy me. When you're sitting at home, it's one thing. Yeah. But if I pay money for a show, I don't want to be looking at a jumbo screen watching what I could be watching on TV. That's why I'm here. I want to see stuff in the ring. Exactly. Um, so, Enzo and Cass again. Cass, I, are they done with that feud? SummerSlam, probably. I don't like... If you're going to have... I, I, people can't see what I'm doing, but I, I'm raising one hand up, it's signaling a level. Like, you're going to have a monster of a superstar oh, yeah. versus, and now I'm putting my hand down low, the other hand, versus a smaller guy in which he's just going to get beat up every time. I don't need to see that match more than once. Twice, I'll accept it. Yeah, they're they're doing it to try to get the the sentiment out of how Enzo just won't give up and he doesn't care how how big the odds are no pun intended against him that he's still going to be a fighter and he's still going to get up and come back okay which I get but I also agree with you where it's just like I don't I don't need there's a better way to do it and it's not like they're going to have him sneaking a, a win in you know right. what I mean yeah there's no way he's winning a match against Cass if anything, just have it to where he just comes out and he's like, yeah, I'm still standing. Cass comes out, big boot, leaves. Right. You don't need to keep having a match. We know that Enzo's not winning the match. Unless he wins the match at SummerSlam because Big Show interferes. I figured it was actually going to be Show. But we've seen Cass destroy Big Show on two straight weeks. Which, I get why they're doing it. Obviously, to put Cass over, but... Mm-hmm. I'm still not a fan of how they're doing it. Obviously, the show is going to be done probably after WrestleMania. Before WrestleMania? Yeah. Yeah. So, I was going to say, so it kind of defeats the big show's purpose because if if he's putting Cass over the way he is putting Cass over, that means nobody else can be strong, can be stronger than Cass. You know what I mean? That's had a match with big show. Like, technically, he's kicking the crap out of Big Show more so than Braun did. Yeah. Yeah, because Braun and Show actually had a decent back and forth. They had a giant match. Right. Opposed to what they're doing right now. Right. Where Cass is literally just getting the upper hand on him and kicking the crap out of him. So that means if Cass ever fights Braun, he should do the same thing to Braun. Yes. Which is unrealistic. Agreed. I it, yeah, I I can't agree more, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like it just it just doesn't make sense and that's the problem with the big guys that Vince Vince falls in love with is that you can only book them one way and the problem is is once you start booking them that way 
Especially when you have multiple big guys. Right. Like, imagine if it wasn't a, sp- a split brand right now and Baron was on the, the same roster, too. Yeah. You'd have three big guys that you're trying to put over as dominant. Right. Well, what do you do when they end up meeting each other? How do you... How do you well, you put, you put Roman in the match and let <laughs> Roman win, and that's how you get away with that. So anyway, Or Cena. <laughs> um, yeah, or Cena. Um, so... <laughs> Emma interrupted Kurt and actually said pretty much what she had posted on her Twitter and Instagram about how she feels that other people are getting shots that she should get. Especially when she's fresh back from an injury. They know she's healthy. Yeah. Put her out there. Well, uh, they did. Yeah, but put her, out, put her out there for, like... Am I the only one that when... So... She, Obviously, she she took a jab at Kurt and was like, well, maybe to get your attention, you know, to pay attention to me, I'll start dating your new son, right. Jason Jordan. He's like, oh, you want my attention? You got my attention. You got a match with Nia. Which. I instantly went, boo. Well, I was like, if they did it differently, it's probably a little bit different for you because you're kind of, you can kind of be knee-jerk reaction to stuff sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. I'm not that way. Usually if I say something or people are like, wow, that was kind of mean, I still mean it. Yeah. It's just you pissed me off enough to the point where I don't care if I say it or not. Right. But other than that, stuff that I say and my reactions to people in general are well thought out. And I don't have a, an, I respond out of anger and didn't mean what I said. And I don't like it when they play that in, even though it's realistic and other people probably go, oh, I get that because I'm like that. Or, hey, my brother Sammy's like that or whatever. So I get it, but for me, I just look at it and just go, "Yeah, way to way, way to let your emotions make a make a judgment call that was stupid." Yeah, see, the this is what I would have loved to have had happen. Naya makes her entrance. And while she's doing it, she gets attacked by Emma with like a chair or something, right? Or just take her take her out of the knee. Somehow, where she manages to get the upper hand on her, gets her in the ring, and then is beat her with something so bad that she gets the pin. So Emma gets the win, not clean at all, then grabs a mic, and then is like, do I have your attention now? Then you could set up an Emma and, and Nia feud, where eventually, you know, I mean, Nia's going to get the upper hand because she's Yeah, because right now beast. you're doing this stuff with Bailey right. and Sasha and Alexa, where you don't really want to put Nia on the back burner. You don't want to go back to Jobber City because that's just digression and stupid right, right at this point. So give her Emma. Yeah, have her and Emma have a nice short little back and forth feud. And you could even end up adding Dana Brooke into it as a helper because her and Emma had a whole buddy-buddy yeah, buddy thing that we're still confused addressed. about since the pay-per-view. Right. Uh, stupid. But, yeah, so uh, Naya, Naya's, what the flipping, I called it flippy flop. That's what I wrote it down as. When she literally, she bounced off the ropes and did a head over heels, like, flip onto Emma before she pinned her. She actually did a flip? Yeah, you didn't see it? No. Yeah, she she bounced off the ropes and she did a, a head first flip and landed on Emma. Instead of she landed wrong, I'm surprised she didn't crush Emma because she needed to go a little bit further so her butt would have landed on the other side of Emma and her feet. But she ended up uh, making it where like her lower back and stuff landed directly on Emma. I mean, Emma was kind of ready for it anyway, so it was ended up being okay. Yeah, but. I still have it recorded. I'll have to rewatch. Just yeah, to dude. I actually went, wait. What? <laughs> um, does anybody care about Tazawa and Davari? Um, the storyline is kind of. I don't want to use the word compelling, but I. I kind of like what they're doing with it, but they don't give it enough time to do it properly. As far as T- Titus Brand and him not wanting Tazawa to hurt himself and be out, and they just have kind of short. Um, back and forth with each other, which is always like, screw you, I, I make my own decisions, you're the one that gets me matches, I do the matches type yeah. deal. I think it's their way of trying to have something that has some drama to it that'll draw people to 205 Live. How's that working out? I don't know. I, I say it to you like it's your idea. <laughs> <laughs> I The only reason I'm not watching 205 Live now is just I forget and even with them reminding you during uh, SmackDown, mm-hmm. by the time SmackDown's done, 
I've got other stuff that I want to be doing. And I don't want to go onto my Xbox, go onto the network, start the show that is already a couple minutes plus in. Even though, obviously, you can start from the beginning. I'm aware of that. I just... I don't want all these extra steps that I don't want to do. That's yeah. why... I, I mean, that could be why the, the show itself has terrible ratings. And it's... I understand this, this thought process, or this argument, but I also don't. Maybe you have something that'll make more sense to me. But the argument for why 205 Live isn't doing quite as well is because the crowd isn't into it. And the people say that the crowd isn't into it because they've already endured a whole SmackDown show, so they're tired. Bull. They endure a three-hour Raw and still give plenty of energy in the main event when it's a good main event. Right. That's the thing, is that 205 just isn't that good. And it's not their fault, the wrestlers. No, it's... it's It's Because they're allowed to do what they... They're only allowed to do certain things and not what they're capable of. Yeah. And that's the problem. And then you can also see, I've said this before, and I don't know if you've like fully noticed, but you can tell on Raw when they have a cruiserweight match that once they even see a cruiserweight coming out, the crowd is instantly just out of it. And that's WWE's fault. Yeah. Because they literally, while watching on TV, they basically for lack of better terms, no-sell the cruiserweights. Like, the majority of them get jobber entrances where you come back from commercial and they're already in the ring. Yeah. Either all of them, or whoever, one of them's in the heels in the ring, and the one guy's already halfway to the ring. Right. So you've already programmed your people watching on TV to think that you don't care about the cruiserweights. Oh, why should I? No, I agree. They, they actually did the last two weeks where... All of the cruiserweights got full entrances like they should, in my opinion. And I don't know if that's going to help or not, but you can't you can't have this this underselling of your pro certain part of your product and then wonder why people are like, oh, it's not important. Like if you don't deem it important and you treat it as it's not being important, that's exactly what your audience is going to think about it. Right. All right. That's all I got. Well, I agree. Uh I forgot they also interviewed Jason Jordan later in the show before, after his announcement, after the announcement of his match being next and but well before, before his match. His match. Yeah. Uh, so. Ah, crap. I forgot to go back and watch. So he, he says in that interview, he says that, I don't remember how he worded it, but he basically worded it as, I just barely found out that Kurt was my dad. Right. That's. Which is not no. remotely what the story has been, as far as I remember. The story is that he found out in college. Yeah, it was other. It was other when he turned eighteen or when he was in college. Yeah. Either way, his adoptive parents. Because he told Corey in NXT. Yeah. Which I also find it weird that his own tag team partner didn't know. How are you telling Corey Graves something, but you're not telling Chad Gable, your American Alpha well, tag team partner? Well, the argument behind that is that Corey and Jason came into NXT at the same exact time, so they knew each other a little bit longer. They went through a little bit more, so he, he trusted him. And for the storyline, having somebody else to trust. And it all, also might play into it later down the road. How far after Jason did Chad come in? Honestly, I don't know. I just know that Jason and, and Corey literally... Because I same... don't ever remember them as singles. Oh, no, they, they were... But they, you could still be in the Performance Center for a long time. Right. Depending but, uh, on who you are. I mean, are. they were a tag team for a couple of years. Yeah. Three, maybe three. Like, yeah. how do you how do you not tell? Like, you're going to war with this person in the ring in tag team matches. How do you not share? If they were bringing Chad. Personal aspects of If your they life? were bringing Chad to Raw or he was already on Raw, it probably would have been him instead of Corey. Or both of them. I'm just, since yeah. he's on the different brand, it wasn't as easy and for the way they think about I mean, it. Here's what you... I mean, if you're going to break them up anyway, right? Br bring them both over and then find out that Chad was the one that told Corey. So then Jason's mad at Chad and then Chad ends up going back to SmackDown or whatever. Yeah, but from what I understood is they didn't want to technically break them up. I know, right? All the other tag teams you are. I quit. But anyways, so he was saying in an interview he just barely found out. Like, he was, he was alluding to in... 
the interview that he just found out in real life his character that last week he just found out that Kurt was his dad. Yeah. So Jason got confused about reality and character yeah. because in reality he found out the week before. But yeah. his character knew since college. His parents told him he was adopted. He hired a private investigator. They found out. They found his uh, biological mother. Then his biological mother told him who his dad was. Yeah. And then he decided not to tell anybody because he wanted to do things and make a name for himself without people, others saying, oh, you only got it because of who your dad is or handing him stuff because of who his dad was. Right. But now going forward, that's going to be the story anyway. Yeah. So I mean, con- I, get, I, I, I get it. It's just contradictory and... Yeah. But either this way, once I, heard, so bad. once I heard him say that, I just since I just found out a week ago that Kurt was my... I was like, no, you did. Right. But Jason Jordan WWE did not. Right. <laughs> uh, it's, I'm telling you, there's something not right about this in that I'm telling you that they're rushing it because somebody forgot something. I don't know what you mean, like... Like, there's just so much inconsistency with, with the story, and and it's, it's just a, a bad angle, pardon the pun, that first, I just feel like... This angle? They, I feel like they had, they had planned it in advance, but then somebody forgot to continue the planning, and they were just like, well, what do we got? Just roll with it. I think part of it was is they weren't... They weren't a hundred percent sure on which one of American Alpha it was going to be until the week before, right? Which, which to me that shouldn't matter. It should still be the same story regardless. Just make them both. <laughs> say he was in a like it was college. Who's to say that he wasn't seeing multiple women? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because when they when they first debuted on Maine, American Alpha, people were like, okay, well. That would be cool if they did a storyline with Kurt Angle. Right. Because they used to have Team Angle with Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin. Right. This would be just Team Angle 2.0. Right. I would have I would have enjoyed that. Uh, also, I'm just going to skip ahead to the to the Jordan match because we keep talking about it. Cause, Might as well. Because WWE is dumb with how they did it. Uh, they actually did an interview with... Kurt Hawkins in the back, which is rare. Yeah. And he said, I'm just going to go out there and smack him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. <laughs> uh, so Jason Jordan, I mean, I, I'm going to say, am I the only one, but we talked about it. Am I the only one that thinks Jason Jordan should use the angle slam as his finishing maneuver? And by the way, you're not the only one just in this room. There was another podcast that I watched that they were like, oh, I was totally expecting the angle slam. And it looked like he started to do it, but then was like, wait, I don't know how to do it. Am I allowed to do it? I'll just do this weird neck breaker. But didn't tell Kurt Hawkins about it? Now, I, I, <laughs> I think he wanted to do his own variation. And also, you know, the the finisher with Chad Gable with the two of them. So I, where, you know, he throws him to Chad. So I think he wanted to do it. He wanted to do a double homage. Where it was like, I want to do like a Kurt Angle slam type. And I also want to do the thing where I used to throw the dude to, to Chad, but I'm going to do it to myself. Right. But so it's, it's like he started with the, the angle slam because the way he had him on his shoulder and then threw him up. And I think he either had goosebumps, too much adrenaline, or something, but he ended up... It, it, didn't, it looked like he bailed on trying to do the, the start of the angle slam and then grabbed him differently. Yeah, a little bit. Like he put his, then he put his hand over the back, of, or his arm over the back of Kurt's head. No, no, I'm gonna have to. Re- I still have it recorded. I have to rewatch because it didn't look natural either way. No, it it looked like it was the first time he'd done it. Yeah, like legit the first yeah. time, not the first time on TV, just the first time. Yeah, which he probably he probably practiced it in his head maybe at the performance center before the show maybe right. once or just went through it with Kurt or, like or last week when they and... told him he was coming to Raw and he needed a new finisher yeah <laughs> um <laughs> I mean it's definitely a move that I'm interesting to see once he gets it ironed out yeah because it looked kind of cool agreed uh so explain to me how 
a month ago, we go from <laughs> WWE not knowing what to do with Bailey to wanting to maybe keep her off TV for a little while. So they literally even played the injury angle. To all of a sudden, she's now the number one contender for the women's title on Raw. The only thing I can guess how, is... How you is, doing that? The only thing I can guess is based off from her uh, being on Stone Cold's podcast. And I guess she, she talks to Vince quite a bit. My thought is is that he, she went to him and said, you know, instead of taking me off TV, let me stay on Give TV. Give me a title shot. And let me, be, let me be a little bit different. Let's, let's take steps on making me... Because the last two times she's been in the ring she's been a lot more aggressive a lot faster pace and staying more away from the uh, and like her i mean she did do her little ponytail tug thing once right but other than that like the move that where she puts him in the ring rolls out and then she does her little floating doll thing. she like half-assed the the floating she like rolled out and just did it real quick and like ran right at sasha I mean, it didn't look bad. Right. I'm just saying, like, I could tell that she was being a lot more aggressive and doing things a lot more with what seemed a purpose. And that would be multiple weeks in a row. So I'm thinking they were just like, all right, instead of taking her off TV, let's see, since she is kind of a cash cow, let's see if we can switch it up enough where fans won't be mad about it, which I don't know why they would be because... You can still be happy-go-lucky and aggressive in the ring. I don't get right. the, the stigma. I mean, wouldn't... I mean, her being off TV, they're not going to lose... Like, the kids are still going to go and, and be like, Mom, Dad, I want a Bailey shirt when they're at the live event. Have yeah, her off the, TV for a couple weeks. Yeah, but they don't look at it like that. And then make this triumphant face return. Yeah. Which they, I get is, is a played-out scenario, but... They don't look at it like that, though. And this is one of the reasons why WWE gets stale is they literally look at it for every single show they do. They look at it as nobody's ever seen this before, and that's why they do stuff the same over and over, because they just... It's it's, terrible. I don't want to say it's an assumption, but more or less their business plan, per se, is that, all right, nobody's ever seen this show that's in this arena tonight. We have to do it the same exact way as we did yesterday, so they didn't miss anything. And it gets repetitive and redundant. Yeah. And overdone. I'm trying to think of other words that mean So either way, Bailey's the new number one contender. And what was a really good match? Um, I don't want to say it, it, I, it made me feel bad for Sasha because I don't generally feel bad for people, but for the sake of discussion points. I, it's, it's... She's going to turn heel. Yeah. Because of this. So, I get it. If... Assuming she does turn heel. If she doesn't turn heel, I don't get why they did what they've done. It's going to end up going that way, but I don't I mean, I don't really know how soon, obviously. It, it, it would need to be soon for the payoff. If it's not until, like, Mania, then this last week, this whole storyline with Sasha and Bailey is for naught. Now, see, what I was thinking she was going to do to turn heel is... I don't want it to go this way, but it probably will is Bailey will beat Alexa, get the belt. Yeah. And then Sasha will say, hey, we had that good match. Give me a title shot, buddy. And then they'll have maybe a feud back and forth for a little while. I say that Bailey wins at SummerSlam. Sasha goes out to congratulate her and then attacks her. See, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm, I'm saying that. For me, I'd rather it be in a match where she does the heel stuff to get the win opposed to just goes out and attacks her just because that she's angry. And I agree because the, the, the I'm your friend, I'm going to come congratulate you and then attack you is seriously played out. And it's too much of that retarded female drama that I don't like. Yeah. I'd much rather it be in a, hey, hey buddy, give me that match. Yeah, and then Bailey could even be like, well, you, you kind of got to earn it. Like, I already beat you. You need yeah. to beat somebody. Yeah, and then, then you, you could even have it where Alexa and Sasha have, you know, a little short feud for for building up. Even throw Emma in there. Nia's going to be thrown in there. 
find ways to have Sasha get these wins where there's subtle heel things. Like, oh, she got a hand hand of trunks there right at the last second to get the three count. Right. You know, stuff like that. Or finding, like, a... It's not technically heelish. Or, I mean, kind of... Like, she has a match with Nia. Find a way to hurt Nia so Nia gets counted out type deal. Yeah. And then just have these little tiny subtle heel things that she does. Then she earns the shot against Bailey. And then she goes full heel on on Bailey. Like once the match starts, like even like an eye poke or kick to the knee, and it's just like it's my belt that you took from me. I'm gonna kick the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, and and like be just don't make it a squash match over like a couple of minutes, but make no. it like a good eight to ten minute match where Sasha is just destroying Bailey. Yeah, and ba- Bailey tries to get recover, and she gets a couple moves on, and then. Sasha just turns it right back around on her. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you on that one. Uh, I kind of hate that we're agreeing so much. But at the same time, I don't want to say it's refreshing. Because, <laughs> I mean, we agree on, on a number of things. Oh, yeah. But usually when it comes, like, when it comes to wrestling, obviously I'm older. So I still have a lot of the old thought processes on how wrestling used to be. Right. And how they did stuff, so sometimes I bring that into how I want things done. And that's my whole story. Okay. That was a good one. Yeah, well, Should publish that. It's done. Make it into a movie. Uh, Short story. <laughs> um, so, I really want to see the Good Brothers, Gallows and Anderson, on TV more. And was upset that... Anderson didn't do the Chad too bad laugh. Yeah, every time he doesn't, I'm I'm mad about it. Yep. Um, I I feel like Luke's calling people nerds is lost on a lot of people because I feel like he obviously he's doing it intentionally because he does it in his normal life, like when they're traveling and stuff. Yeah. And they do it in like other segments that aren't on TV. But I feel like it's lost on a lot of people. Like he's, I feel like he's intentionally doing it because it's something that they do back in the they do back in the day. Like who calls somebody a nerd now? Nobody does, because it's just it's like whatever. No, but like the way he does it. Oh yeah, like as an insult and whatnot. Like right. they don't do it like. So I feel like he's doing it as a mockery and because it's funny to him. And it's funny to Carl, but the crowd is just like oh, okay. Like, they don't get that he's, like, making a joke of, basically, their characters. Yeah. Yeah, I... Nerd, for me, should get a similar pop to Stupid Idiot. <laughs> nerd. Or at least in my head, it does, anyway. It does to me. So. I say uh, it right along with him every time. So like, just before he said it, he goes, yeah, because you guys are top, and I went, nerds. <laughs> yeah. I did, too. LB looked at me weird. <laughs> uh, so, Revival got the win... Over the Good Brothers. Uh, yeah, because it's the Hardy Boys music hit towards the end of the match. Right. It was a pretty de- decent match overall, I guess. It was a little bit slow. but So, here's my question, and, and this is going to lead to our Rumors episode later in the week. Okay. Revival and the Hardys going to have a feud. Yeah. Obviously. The Good Brothers just lost to the Revival. It was in the clean one, though, or loss. So, obviously, the Good Brothers are not getting a title shot anytime soon. Could be a fatal four-way tag, tornado tag match, title takes, summer slam, all tag teams. If they weren't going the direction that I think they're going, there would probably have been a, a multi-tag team match yeah. at SummerSlam. But they're potentially going down a road. That doesn't allow for that. Less and traveled. They're running out of time. A little murky. They're running out of time for the setup of SummerSlam matches. A bit broken. <laughs> right? Like, is that just me or... or? I don't, I don't like the way WWE does... It's in like three weeks. I don't like the way WWE does their feuds and storylines anyways. I feel like they're all too quick. Yeah, and, and there's no build-up. Yeah. And 
we're about to have the second biggest show of the year for wrestling. Right. And you're going to have... And SummerSlam's joint. Yeah. You're going to have a buildup of a, of, a, of a feud in a couple of weeks? No. Like, if you haven't started it already... I get that they want to they wanna be like, oh, and by the way, guess which match just got added to the SmackDown card? Right. I get that. But it should still be a feud that's already happening. Or one that had some, you know, Easter eggs laid for it type deal. Right. When I say Easter eggs, it's just because that's all I can think of on the yeah, fly. Yeah, the one that, that I'm talking about that we'll talk about Saturday. Sunday, whatever. No, it'll be on Sunday. We'll talk about it Saturday. All right. <laughs> uh, there's no... The Easter eggs are for this team, but not... Well... Never mind, I take that back. Because when... We'll talk about it, I guess, briefly. Talk about Eric Rowan? No. Oh. While the While Dean and Seth were fighting oh. the Tourage, okay. it showed backstage Sheamus and Cesaro watching, watching the match. Right. And I, I said to myself, why? And then Corey must have heard me because he said... Oh, well, the Miz Siraj, if they can get a win here, might be looking to maybe challenge later for the tag team titles. Right, which was basically a, a swerve. Right. More or less. Redirect. Yeah. So, anyway, I don't want to, like, I don't well, want to... They did the same thing last week, too, though, didn't they? I could have sworn they did a thing where Sheamus and Cesaro, they showed them backstage real quick watching whatever tag match was going. Probably, but it was if it, it, it was one that made sense for them to be watching. I because they of, they were also watching the revival and the Good Brothers. Yeah. Well, I just I kind of get confused sometimes because with Twitter and Instagram, they show other stuff that sometimes isn't on the show, so sometimes I forget which is and which isn't. I just took it as they're the tag champ, so they're watching all the tag teams regardless to see who they're you know gonna they're, they're studying. That's that's the way I looked at it. Studying for the bar? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? See what yeah. I did? Lawyered. Whatever. Um, so anyway, at the end, uh, Seth wanted the, the shield fist bump did, from did, Dean. Did you notice before that I didn't because I was spacing out? I actually didn't pay attention to most of that main event match, by the way. I didn't pay much attention at all. I don't know why. I just wasn't really invested in it for some reason. Okay. But I, somebody else, I can't remember who it was I saw, said, uh, like, they, like, high-fived or hugged or something like that after the win or, like, all excited with each other, and then that's when Seth did the shield fist and Dean kind of acted like he didn't see it and walked away. I saw that part, but I didn't see, like, them... I didn't see them hug or high-five. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, and I, I know Dean definitely saw... Yeah, he, Seth. Yeah, he had it where he kind of looked at it and just walked away, right. like whatever. It wasn't like he it. didn't see it, and he actually even as he was leaving had sort of like this, like he kept doing his own like fist pump, and then like kept looking back. Yeah, like, yeah, you want the fist bump? Like here it is. <laughs> yeah, I was almost like I, I want to, but I can't. Right. Uh, uh, so eventually they will, because I said so. Um, but that's really it for Raw. Uh, sure is. Bye now. I I guess for me it was a better episode than the week before, given that there was only like the one glaring issue for me instead of a whole bunch. Um, but anyway. I've had, I've had more issues with SmackDown than I have Raw lately, because for Raw, I do more complaining about Raw, but that's because it's a longer show and they jam more unneeded crap into it than I want. Like their recaps and they're reminding you of stuff that you just saw. That stuff annoys me. But SmackDown for the most part, I'm just like what, what, what is this? <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like aside from the, the women's division, I've been That's more of it probably. A little bit more into SmackDown. For me, personally. 
I'm, I'm tired enough right now where my brain hurts. But either way, we're done. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Everything's on the screen. Look at it. It was at the beginning, too. Yeah, deuces. Double up. <laughs>